Now, back to this colour. I've actually added a little bit more ultramarine blue and darkened it slightly. Although it appears quite dark, I've watered it down quite considerably. What we're doing now, you can see, is simply leaving, deliberately leaving some highlights here and there. Maybe add a, a little bit of green and yellow in, just to vary the way in which the rocks are formed and the colours of them. A little bit of ultramarine blue. That's going to be shadow area anyway, but uh, it does no harm just to add a little bit of variety. And then in the foreground or the near foreground, we'll pull this down like that. So it clearly separates the ridge out from the distant valley below. Now to represent the end of the road and this area here, which is virtually the ridge over which we're looking down into the valley below, I'm going to do this in a slightly stronger colour of, or a slightly warmer colour rather, of raw sienna, touch of ultramarine blue and actually a touch of lemon yellow. But although it looks the same as that at the moment, what I'm going to do is just run a few streaks of ultramarine blue into the front edge and a little bit of light red maybe just to give it that little bit of extra emphasis there'll be warm colors which will bring it closer to the viewer but it'll also be stronger than these colors in the distance this is where you can be a little bit freer and you can start leaving streaks and bits and pieces of bits and pieces of white there, we can turn them into stones or something. Even this here is pretty pale. Once you start putting this green colour on it, you can see how it leaves quite pale areas which look almost white by comparison. And uh, this is the problem that newcomers have when they, they first, particularly when they put the sky on, because all that they see is what they think is an over strong sky or an over strong mountain. Uh, because they've got nothing else on the paper in terms of colour to compare it against. So it seems ridiculously strong and, and they panic and discard the painting before it's even had a chance. So if you're going to throw a picture away, just wait a little while. It might actually turn out to be better than you think. Mind you, there's plenty of times I've waited confidently <laughs> following that principle and it's got worse as it's gone on. So don't worry. It happens to us all. I'll we'll just take that a little bit darker because that's again just starting to represent the shadow areas. These will dry back quite a bit uh, cooler, as, uh, quite a bit uh, softer as well incidentally so don't worry if it looks again it looks a little bit dark. Again let's get a hint. Well we've got these potential rocks here. See how easy they are to manufacture. Right now where we've left those little white patches we can just touch over some of them and uh, it can be a wall, a stone wall if you want, the hint of a stone wall just appearing and uh, reappearing and disappearing over the over the edge of the ridge and if you make it a little bit uh, hit and miss like that there we go so you haven't got that solid line of wall right across your line of sight. Now you can see I'm just the way I'm just letting the the brush, even this big brush with its uh, strong point is just uh, dancing quite happily across with fairly fluid washes just following some of those pencil lines, a very hit and miss way. In fact I was going to use the rigger for this but you can see the, the point on this, uh, if, you, if you're quite gentle about it and just blobbing colours here and there all the way back, just see how fine that point is that you can get. It doesn't need to be too strong this colour because you've already got that colour on, the base colour. So if you put another base colour, another layer of base colour, it's going to be twice as strong. So it's probably not much more than you need anyway. And there you can see we just need to do the, the shadow area of the, of the top of the mountain, the mountain peak itself. Right now as I said, while well, it's still a little bit damp and uh, moist we'll just uh, put a little bit of almost neat ultramarine. Don't want it too strong. I think we'll just put some clean water on the brush and just ease that out slightly. But it does do enough to give us some uh, hint of 
the depth of the shadow behind the back of the mountain like that which is all good stuff whoops now there we are splattered a big lump of water there not to worry if you're quick about it before the paint has time to uh, melt and uh, start going for a run back got away with it so when that happens don't panic if it really goes wrong then you've got ample time to panic later on but don't panic at the outset because you might have a chance of, uh, of rescuing it like that you see the way going down the mountain gives that nice sort of uh, effect of these screes and stones over thousands of years that have broken free and rolled down the mountain into the valley below I think I'll bring some light red into that mix this time because it's coming closer so it's a little bit warmer just keep looking all the time just sit back away from the picture or stand up and walk away from the picture and uh, check what it looks like from a few feet away you can get too close to pictures when you're painting them and it's very illuminating if you can stand up periodically and walk away from a picture even the small relatively small watercolor you certainly need to do that when you're doing oil painting uh, of any or acrylics of any sort of uh, size uh, and that comes naturally because very often you're standing up to do it so you tend to step back with watercolors if you're sitting down to do it you tend to stay sat on your backside right a few trees hinted at the uh, on these wooded slopes so I've just hinted at them with the scraping of the brush the same really the same mix as I've done here but it's just blended into the it's it's very much a a dry brush, a scrabble, scrapey effect like that. I'm just going to add another little scraping or two of raw sienna and uh, lemon yellow just to, to soften off and really weld together some of these uh, shadow areas that perhaps are a little bit too heavy when I put them in originally. Right, I've just put a little bit of light red in that. It just gives a first indication that maybe it's the end of the summer and autumn is just about uh, around the corner. I'm going to use the palest pale colour that I've used here but I'm streaking it. Notice the way I'm streaking it because the road even on these country roads still has a little bit of a camber. Right I've just added a little bit of extra bank on that side just to define that the road actually goes down and round the back of that. Right now we've added a little bit of watery shadow around this edge here we just put a hint of a roof and a couple of doors and windows for the farm, no more than that. And a few little white, really tiny flecks. I've just added a little bit of the same shadow colour just to the right hand side of it and it looks all the way like sheep. I'll actually show you how to paint sheep a little bit uh, closer up than that when we come to uh, the last DVD. But for now, if you want to paint sheep, just find a little white space and put a little bit of shadow around it. If you make a mess of it and you try and do it here, don't worry, you can always turn it into a rock. So there we are. We've got our nice distant valley taking our eye through into the distance and beyond these mountains here. We've got just blobs of paint, no more than blobs of paint, that give us that lovely depth to the picture, as well as the blue and pale colours at the back and the warmer colours as we come forward. So the quick review on this was this, if you remember, we were dealing with essentially a bowl-shaped composition where you had hills here and hills and mountains up here sweeping down, so really all you were doing was that with the pencil. And although it looks quite complex now, if you remember from the outset, all that we had here, once we got the far distant outline of these mountains was a couple of upturned V's and flattened V's for these hills here, a sharper upturned V for these hills here is a little bit of a squiggle of a shape. This is just, well I suppose what the nearest thing I can think of is a flattened, a very flattened out M shape. So there's nothing in here that requires any immense drawing skills whatsoever. But if you go about it step by step, I think you'll enjoy this and I think you'll find that with a little bit of practice you can produce something that you're going to really be pleased with, whether it's in the Lake District in the northwest of England or wherever it is in your favourite part of the world. Again, have a go and enjoy it.
there's mountains and hills and rocks. Just a few of the images that we've managed to capture throughout this DVD. And even though some of these finished items might look a little bit complex now, I hope you've seen enough to realise that taking things step by step in a very simple way will give you the confidence and the ability to achieve paintings that you can be proud of. Now, as I said earlier, the trick in all this, if, if trick is the right word, is to know when you put the next layer of paint on your picture or at what consistency the paint goes on. And that only happens with practice. And by practice, I'm talking about something that doesn't have to be a full-blown painting. You could, you could turn over a piece of watercolour paper on a painting that hasn't worked and have a little practice on the reverse side, for example, with the rigger, uh, using the scraping technique that we use to create these rocks in this Lakeland scene. Oh, and remember the tonal sketch. It really is so important and so helpful and actually quite enjoyable to get the picture you want to produce firmly fixed in your mind. And that's very, very important and it's a technique that's practiced by every professional artist that I know. Okay, so what's coming next? Well, we've already covered skies and then we've moved down to mountains. So the next logical thing down the mountain that we hit is trees. And as you can see, we've already touched on trees in a very simple way in a couple of the demonstrations that we've done here. But what we're going to look at in the next DVD is to create trees that look so much better than the proverbial lollipop on a stick. We'll be covering deciduous trees and evergreens, trees in all the seasons, far distant trees and close-ups of trees and all sorts of other foliage. And you know by now what I'm going to say, that I'll see you again just as soon as you play the next DVD. Cheers.